Yes. Right. Yeah. Another one. Thank you. Another oh, one. well, don't encourage me. You never know. <laughs> They're locked in Korea or in the future. <laughs> so, did you yeah, take a become a minister? Oh, that's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> if I practice. Oh, let's see. Uh, what is uh, this year? 45. Donald, you're live, so watch what you say. I'm live. I remember being in 76. Wow. So did you take the glasses off because it helped you perform? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Elijah did not you. wear glasses. You know what? Everybody's blurry. So. <laughs> I thought of that too. I didn't see your reaction. You didn't see, you didn't see Debbie's reaction during your You're too loud. You heard oh that. Oh my God, it's so loud. Trust me, all the Zoom people are saying he's just right. <laughs> Gwen, was he all right today? Could you hear him? It was great. It was like I went to a play. I loved it. Oh, yes, it I agree. Samaria. I went to Sight and Sound. A little thing I do occasionally. There you go. You got the ultimate compliment. She, uh, uh, Gwen said she went to Sight and Sound. Yeah, you can turn, <laughs> it, it, turn it up a little. Yes. Oh, will one of you Zoomers please talk again? We'll turn up the volume here. Mary Ann wants to talk, but she didn't put her, hit her microphone. Okay. Mary Ann, okay. click the microphone. The little <laughs> thing. Unmute yourself, Mary Ann. Okay. I, it was a beautiful <laughs> sermon. Okay. It's a wonderful sermon. Well, thanks. See? It's a little uh, something that I like to do. I'll tell you honestly, it was like, oh, what am I going to preach? What am I going <coughs> to preach a sermon? Oh, I'll just do a little. <laughs> <laughs> so it's All right. Amazing. It was fantastic. Oh, we love drama here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you may have noticed. Than others, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's drama. There's drama. drama. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so, all you need here. so we have uh, we have Gwen and Marianne on Zoom. Gwen and Marianne, let me introduce you to uh, who we've got today. Let me get you around here. Wave <laughs> to Marianne and Gwen. Let me get you. Oh, here's me. <laughs> <laughs> There's Marie. Hi, Marie. Hi, Marie. Oh, Marie. Marilyn, everybody. <laughs> there we go. There's everybody. Now somebody will come late, and I'll have to I'll have to redo it. Okay. Okay. You've got the uh, calm there. Excellent. Well, yes, sir. Uh, you've been given four pages, uh, and I'm sorry at home, ladies. I'm not as technologically skilled as Justin, who can boom put these up on the internet. And, like, well, there's three pages, and they're all double sided. Oh, oh. oh my gosh. Some are double. -sided. Some are right. But it's well, all in the, the Bible. Should be a responsive Except reading. for the reading. Yep. That's page one, a responsive reading for an opening. Page two is Luke chapter 24, 1 through 12. That's the second one. The next. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. The <laughs> next one is 24, 13 through 35. That may be double sided. Yeah. It's yeah. the second page you have to do in your hand. Yeah. Turn your responsive reading over. Oh, wow. Okay, that's oh, wow. the first one. Okay. The second one. Then. That, that's okay. page two. And then the last one is Acts, Acts. chapter 10. So those. We'll get to in a moment. I want to thank you for being faithful members and attending the Bible study in person or at home. It's been really a great thrill for me. And how much you've taught me and the ideas and themes that you've come up with are just remarkable. Uh, but let's just take a moment, use this responsive reading that we've used before for our opening. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. praise. 
It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You establish your church to testify the power of Christ's resurrection, a people of one heart and soul, holding everything in common, sharing their abundance with the poor. You are the God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you spoke through your prophets of the Messiah who would come to suffer so that all might repent and be delivered from sin. You are our shepherd, O Lord, and in you there is nothing we lack. You lead us to green pastures, still waters. You restore our souls. You prepare a table before us, our cup overflows. All the ends of the earth turn to you and worship you, O Lord. The poor eat, and they are satisfied. Those who seek you praise your name. Even those who sleep in the dust bow down before you. The sea roars, the floods clap their hands. The hills sing together for joy. For you judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. All the ends of the earth have seen your victory. You watch over the faithful, O Lord, those who keep your word. They are like trees planted by streams of water. They yield fruit in due season and prosper in all things. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Amen. Okay. Um, let me just do a little or longer recap to refresh our memories of where we've been and what we've talked about. We're in week five. We're going to be looking at Luke's story of the resurrection. And Luke, the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, go together. So that's why we have a reading from Luke and also from the book of Acts, because originally they were uh, a pair written on two scrolls, we believe, that somehow got separated in history and uh, the book of John got put in the middle of them. But otherwise, they were originally sent to the same audience and they were written by the same person or the same school of thought. But uh, you'll remember we're looking for three themes uh, dealing with uh, death, uh, burial, crucifixion, and the second theme was raised or risen. And the final one was appearance. Okay. So in every reading we've done, we've seen someone announce that, oh, Christ died, or he's buried, or they crucified him. But he was raised, or he is risen. He is not here. And that he appeared. So if you remember, we went back to Apostle Paul and very concisely, he told us in five verses in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 8, that I passed on to you what I received, which was of greatest importance Christ died for our sins, as written in the scriptures, that he was buried and raised three days later, as was written in the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, then 12, then to 500, then to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, to me. So this is Paul. <clears throat> then we went on the next week to Acts again. In Acts chapter 2, which is Peter. So we've got uh, 
one of the original apostles and the Johnny Come Lately apostle. <laughs> and Peter said in chapter 2, verse 22, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, by divine authority, did miracles and wonders among you. In verse 23, in accordance with God's plan, he was killed and crucified by sinful men. 24, God raised him from death, setting him free. In verse 32, God raised this Jesus from death, and we are all witnesses to this fact. He was raised to God's right side, received the Holy Spirit, and what you see in here is his gift provided out uh, powered out on us or poured poured out on us so the same three themes but in a different format and you'll notice no women were named no thunder and lightning a lot is missing from what we think of the Easter story breath. Then we did Mark chapter 16 verses 1 through 20 and then Mark we got some details. Now if you remember I said I think this happened because people in the new communities of faith were wondering tell us more. What happened? What was going on? Uh, who was there? Who was the first to see this? Uh, Peter, Peter, what, what do you mean? Uh, Luke, what happened? So Mark, the earliest of the Gospels and the shortest, said it was, oh, I like to use colors. What means it different colors? <laughs> Mark said it was Mary Magdalene. Uh, Mary, another Mary, uh, mother of James, and then Solomon, who names these three women. What were their concerns? Who's going to roll the stone away? And who do they encounter? A young man. A Young man. And he was wearing a white robe. And they were alarmed. And then in verse 6, this young man says, Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, the first message. He is not here. He has been raised. The second message. Now, Go give this message to the disciples. He is going to Galilee. And there you will see him. So Mark gets in all the main themes, adds a little bit more detail. Gives us some names and some information. Okay, mm -hmm. one more little recap. Erase some of this. I don't know if you're taking notes, but feel free. Anyone need uh, Mark? Uh, Mark, they believe, was a protege of the Apostle Paul or a friend of Paul, and if memory serves me right, uh, Paul refers to Mark's mother and grandmother in one of the letters. Oh, I knew your mom. I remembered your grandma. What women of faith. So I'm back now. The last week when we did Matthew, And Matthew is chapter 28. And if you recall, Matthew mentions Mary and Magdalene. 
Uh, he doesn't say who it was, but he says the other Mary <clears throat> was with her. And then the detail he gives is that there was an earthquake. Have we heard about earthquakes before? And the answer is no way. And then an angel. Matthew oh, somewhere that said an angel came down, rolled away the stone, appearance like lightning, clothes as white as snow. So at least there's only one angel, like Mark mentioned. But in this, it's identified not as just a young man, but an angel. And an angel means messenger of God. And uh, there are guards mentioned in this story, guards watching the tomb. And when the earthquake happens and this angel arrives, they go comatose. And uh, they go rigid. And the angel says, Jesus, who was crucified, verse 6, he is not here. Number 2, he has been raised. Go tell the disciples he has been raised. He is going to Galilee again ahead of you. There you will see him. Remember what I have told you. And then after saying that, Matthew adds, Jesus met the two women. He appeared to them right then. So we get a personal encounter right away. And Again, the message is, tell the disciples, but go to Galilee. That's where I'm going to see you. So, some similar details, but uh, some differences, some things added. Okay. Any questions? Any thoughts? Comments? We good? Yes. Thank you. We're going to go on to Luke now. Today's study is from Luke 24 and the book of Acts. And you see, we're getting the various voices Paul, Peter, Mark, Matthew. Uh, and let me say one other thing about the Gospels. Um, have you heard, ever heard the term synoptic? Gospels and yeah. Uh, yeah. Gospels. No. Um, I call them the Cyclops. What's a Cyclops? One eye. A one eye. Cyclops. C. Yes, is that you? Who knows? Cyclops. Good enough. Means, yeah. One eye also. Synoptic Gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Luke. They believe that Mark was number one first, that Matthew and Luke found Mark's Gospels and built upon it. So they used Mark both of them. And then they had some stories that were similar that show up in Matthew and Luke. The big scholars call this Q. And I forgot what Q means, but it's like source or background. And then they had their own stories that they incorporated. So, uh, Matthew and Luke share a lot of gospel, a lot of stories from Mark. They share stories from this source, but then they have their own material. The gospel of John is totally different. It comes like out of nowhere, and it's got some stories the same, but these three gospels are like the Cyclops, the one eye. 
Whew, I'm really rambling along here. You're with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Question about the one eye concept. Yes. One eye meaning the similar perspective or similar words about the same incident. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you read Matthew and Luke and where they agree with Mark, they almost tell the exact same story. Maybe a few minor details, but they both apparently had access when they were writing. Again, uh, Mark written in the early 70s, Matthew and Luke written maybe 10 years later in the 80s, and the Gospel of John another 10 years in the 90s. So there's somewhere between 20 and 30 years maybe spread between these. Gospels. Are they not very old? I mean, it sounds like in, in those years, you're talking about people who are 70 and 80 years old. Yeah, you're right. They're not very old. And it's maybe that they had access to some of the disciples that were still alive or hadn't been dispersed. Yeah. Now, a rich, so Mark, I would imagine, then got the original story from Mary, maybe, and the people who were actually there. Could be, yes. I mean, how would he get the story? Yeah. Um, from uh, <clears throat> Paul, if he was a friend of Paul, and uh, we know Paul went to Jerusalem and spoke with James, the brother yeah, of Jesus, right. an early disciple. So I picture them around the campfire and uh, hey, tell me the old, old stories. But it must have originally come from somebody. Yeah, right? exactly. Mary, Mary, from Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. there's, this, there's a television uh, filmed uh, documentary um series based on these facts and it's called the chosen yeah and when you see it they picture what you're saying reverend pitches they have them sitting at a campfire doing exactly what you just said and um like maybe some childhood stories uh that you remember they're told so often and in the same pattern that Everyone memorizes the details, mostly. Good question. Yeah, Janice. When they say mother of James, that's actually Jesus. When James was Yes. So why don't they say mother of Jesus? Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I guess they it's either like want, uh, Janice was asking when they say uh, James, the uh, Mary, the mother of James, and if it's the James that was the brother of Jesus, why do they just say Mary, Jesus's mother? Mm -hmm. And I don't know the answer to that. Maybe it's another James. Uh, when was the written information put down in the beginning? It had to be just not the mouth. Of it. Well, it was an oral tradition for 40 or 50 years. If Jesus is crucified about the year 30 by the Romans. The Apostle Paul starts his preaching and traveling and a few years after that, starts writing letters to the early church in the 40s and 50s. And I think I'm right in saying that he's dead by the time they start writing the gospels because he's been carted off to Rome and is in prison there. That's why many of his letters are written from Rome to churches in Turkey and Greece. So it's word of mouth. And again, they believe that this is such a tradition that you're told a story, you remember the story word for word as well as you can. And then in the 80s and 90s, they started writing them down. And, uh, for instance, Mark is getting questions from people about, what did Jesus do? Uh, when, did he, when did he get the spirit? Oh, I better write this down for you because 
you're going to a foreign country or I'm having to send this information to you uh, 50 or 100 miles away. So he writes it down. Amy. What kind of language would he write it in? They uh, wrote it in Greek. And everybody understood Greek? And Greek was the universal language of the okay. day. Oh, you're so good. Now, Greek, this is crazy. Greek, of course, at the time was written right to left. And we know this, that they were all written, many of them, in small letters. So it was like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh, wait. There were no vowels. I forgot. Uh, they had no vowels in the early alphabet. It's just like the Torah. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm boring you, just tell me, move on, Rev. Let's get to it. Uh, <laughs> they were written this way, and the way they did vowels were little marks, dots, above, below, things like this. And that's how they got the vowels in these. Is Aramaic? Aramaic. They, they spoke Aramaic. Wait, um, wait, wait. I'm wrong. Greek did have vowels. It was Hebrew that didn't have vowels. Aramaic. <laughs> I was like, like, wow, Greek. The jury. <laughs> I was like, wow, Greek was wrote just like Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'll let you ask it. Like, oh. disregard those remarks that the prosecutor made. Strike <laughs> <Okay. laughs> them from the record. Hebrew, written from right to left, does not have vowels. Greek, written left to oh, right. <laughs> Left to right does have vowels, but written in small letters. Okay. <laughs> I looked up James, and they said in the list of the 12 apostles in the Synoptic Gospels, two apostles called James are differentiated there by their fathers James, the son of Zebedee, and James, the son of Alphaeus. And James, the son of Alphaeus, as James the Less. James the Less, the Less. Oh. Yeah, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, two of the earliest disciples. Okay, that was all by <laughs> way of introduction. <laughs> Let's turn our attention to Luke. You know, that makes us love you more, you know, oh, right? Okay. okay. Well, for me at least, because <laughs> I do oh, that. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. Oh, okay. you know that Reverend Pitches? Uh, he's just so stupid. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Okay. No. Now, the reason I've broken it down this way was Luke is going to tell us these three things, but he does it in three different ways. We've got... 24 verses 1 through 12. Come on, Nancy, pull up the chair. Oh, Luke 24, 1 through 12. The second story is Luke 24, but this picks up in verse 13 through 30. Five, and then since Luke also wrote Acts, we're going to read for the Acts again, and that's going to be 10, 34, through 48. Peter, are you recording this too? Yes, I am. Okay, now go back and I'll read the whole part where I screwed up. It's done. I, I, I'm magical that way. Excellent, because I don't want Justin seeing that. 
that old creature or that. He, he'll need some uh, some relief in Vietnam, so this will give him his uh, his uh, comical relief. I did that on purpose. That's for right. You did. Yes. Yes. I, I do it. Okay. Now, how shall we break this up for weaving purposes? Uh, let's see. In verses. A paragraph. Yeah, I think that's needed. Yeah, we'll big. start. Uh, Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jesus has risen 24. Uh, 24, 1 through 12, we're sorry. <laughs> uh, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that glimmered like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is, has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be risen again. Then they remembered his word. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all of the others. It was Mary, Magdalene, Jonah, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostle, but they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Great, thank you. All right. Now, let's start unpacking it a little, see what new details we're learning here, and whole scope of the action. So, what do you see taking place? Who's involved? Where is it said? Where do you see the, the core message being proclaimed? The three women went to the tomb and they didn't find him. Okay. Uh, so now we've got three women named. Well, Magdalene, Joanna. Yeah. Mary, the mother of James. Mary, again. That Mary, she's the core of this story. <laughs> Mary, mother of James. And there is a new name we got Joanna, or Johanna. Yeah. Jo. J-O-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Joanna. So who's Joanna? Joanna. Where'd so, she come from? <laughs> and She's a maid you servant. look at verse 10, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others. Oh, that's another little clue. Mm -hmm. Get your story. The poor thickens, huh? Mm -hmm. So imagine if all of you women had gone to the tomb, seen what was happening, heard the message, and came back and told Peter and I, and we said, you ladies, you're seeing things, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. And we can't uh, we can't accept what you say. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't do it now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I value my life. Yeah. <laughs> but back in the day, oh, oh, I forgot Bill sitting here too. He would have been even worse. Oh, <laughs> you ladies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're sitting next to someone, you better be careful. <laughs> She's a professional. Uh, yeah, uh, so, yes, Nancy. Why am I thinking that Joanna might have been the wife of uh, <laughs> Joseph, whose tomb it was of Jesus? Christ. Joseph of Arimathea? Yeah, was that Joanna's wife? Ah, uh, I didn't remember that. Well, I don't know if it's 
I don't know if I'm remembering it correctly or not. Well, look, someone else's memory is <laughs> We love you it for happens. that, Nancy. That's right. So um, now we've got a whole group of women at least mentioned that. They said Joanna is um, the wife of Chusa, steward of Herod Antipas. And she was listed as one of the women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities, and she came with them to the to the site. Thank you, Gwen. We're so glad. I'm so glad you're sitting right there with your She's commentary and Bible, or <laughs> <laughs> being able to Google this right while we're talking. Thanks. You're um, welcome. <laughs> let's walk back to the beginning of the chapter. Uh, they were worried about any earthquake. No. 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 How many angels? Two. Two. Two men this time. Where did this guy? Where did this guy? Where did this other guy come from? I wonder. And uh, how were they dressed? Gleamed like lightning. Clothes that gleamed like lightning. The women in their fright, we did see this last time or the last couple, how human emotions were remembered, <clears throat> fear, disbelief, uh, the women confronted with the empty tomb, and the other stories, the guards, what's happening here? So I just take it that our human emotions are completely acceptable and under, you know, and understood, like, what's going on here? So they bow down, and what does the angel say to them, or do the angels say? Verse five and six. Yeah. 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 So they they get the core message: boom, boom, boom. The dead, living. Um, at least this angel or whatever he was reminded them that Jesus has been telling them this. Yes. I don't get it. He told them this and told them this. Uh -huh. And then he dies and he rises and they're like, well, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Um, the reference I looked up is if you have the Gospel of Luke, you can look back to Luke chapter 9. 21 and 22. Does anyone have a Bible? Yep. Marie does. And Laura does. So, if, Marie, do you want to look up Luke chapter 9, 21 and 22? And Laura, you look up 18, 31 through 34. And the first one that gets it gets a prize. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask me to join. Uh, Eight. Luke 18 to 13, 31? Uh, 31 through 34. Okay. Read that, please. Luke chapter 18, verse 31. Then he took the 12 aside and said to them, See, we're going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be handed over to the Gentiles. He will be mocked and insulted and spat upon. After they have flogged him, they will kill him. And on the third day, he will rise again. But they understood nothing about all these things. In fact, what he said was hidden from them. And they did not grasp what he said. Excellent. To your point, like, huh? Uh, what does he mean? Marie, would you be able to read 9, 21, and 22? Yeah. Uh... Twenty-one. But he charged the he charged and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed on the third day. He third day be raised. Perfect. Two little things that I heard in this. One, what Marie read, he said he had to be turned over to the chief priests and the elders, 
and what Laura read, killed by the Gentiles. Hey, I think that covers everyone that lived then. Uh, so we cannot and do not want to assign blame to any particular religious or ethnic background. In fact, what we've also read is that this was done according to God's plan. We read in the previous gospel. Okay, what else do you see here? We've gotten that the two angels. Two men two with men gleaming clothes. Give the message that he's risen. And then where does where did where do they say he will appear? Galilee. 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 Yeah. No. No. He no. First, he first told them when he was in Galilee. Uh, Verse six. Verse six. Where did I mind go? Oh, he's not remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee, right? And then they remembered his words. You're right. Okay. So, so they don't in this text they don't say where he is. So we're not or where he will be. getting <laughs> this appearance. So right now in this first part of Luke, we've got a bunch of women, at least three, maybe four. We've got two men who typically are called angels, but doesn't say living among the dead, he is risen. So we got those two thirds of our three thirds. So, is Cleopa one of those? Excuse me? Is Cleo, Cleopa? I think it's C L E O P A A. Yeah, yeah. In verse 17, is where it's in, the, in 24 17. It mentions them. It says one of them. Yeah, named... you're jumping ahead of me, oh, Bill. Oh, oh. You are an eager student. <laughs> so we're going to turn our attention now to the second part of Luke's story. And you will remember this one, I believe. It's such a popular and familiar story. One of, any one or two people want to volunteer to read? Sure. Peter I'll and take, Amy. I'll take the first five verses. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, read right 13 through 19. 19? Sure. Uh, on the road to Emmaus is what the title is. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet a pow powerful in word and deed before God and all people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to the sentence to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us, they went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find the body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of the companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Anyone else want to pick it up from here? Okay. He said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he's, he went in to stay with them. 
When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scripture to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together, and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them. The visual aspect of that. You can almost see it when we're having communion. He took bread and he broke it and he shared it. Oh my God, it's you. So let's just unpack this a little bit. What do you see going on in the story? Who's involved? What's happening? Anyone? Oh, good dear. He's leaving on the grass. Aw, who came to join us? <laughs> okay, so this was I'll call this uh, part one. Part one here. Uh, now we're on part two of Luke. Part two. What's happening in part two? He opened the, he opened the scriptures to us. Okay. A lot of uh, referral to the scriptures. And since he didn't have his phone with him, what, what did he open? <laughs> <laughs> it was open. They weren't writing. Or they, were they writing? And, and it only means that he verbally. helped them remember. He, he opened them verbally. I, I always wonder, like, like, what did he look like that they didn't recognize? Like, what, yeah. what did they visually see? Just like a stranger or apparently yeah. doesn't that strike you then yeah. yeah it says they were kept from recognizing yeah. him yeah. so he could have looked like whatever he looked like but yeah. they didn't say that was oh that's our guy jesus that's exactly what, what they would that's exactly what they were describing in the christian magazine about what was just said that we were learning that we don't always recognize him when he's talking to us or when he reveals himself to us. And that's what happened to them. Yes. So they're not comprehending who he is, whether mm -hmm. they had a different look or were they just overcome with their grief and they really weren't looking at him. I mean, I don't know if you ever met someone and five minutes later you would ask to describe them and, oh, what did? What were they wearing? I mean, I've often thought, if my grandchildren went to school and they asked me, what were they wearing this morning? Would, would I be able to describe them? I mean, the little one maybe changes her clothes three times before she leaves the <laughs> Well, she had on blue. She had on red. And, she and uh, you know, I'm looking right at them, but I can't remember that they have on uh, black leggings or blue leggings. Uh, so who knows? It would be a great help in a lot. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, how could they be expecting to see him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had so much on their mind mm -hmm. after everything that happened, and it was coming so quickly. Uh -huh. And here they were separated from the group. So they couldn't get all the facts together yet. Like they, we read it now, there's more facts together. Mm -hmm. yeah. They didn't have that. And I think too, I think they were really in fear. I think at this point they're in fear for their lives. They're in mm -hmm. fear for their leader is now gone. What are they going to yep. do? And it all, as you go along, it all crystallizes for them and they all find their purpose. But yeah. at this point, they're really, they're really in the middle of it. Oh, great. That's exactly right. And they they left their families to be disciples with with him. Now they got to worry what's going to happen to our families. We're not there and the Romans are going crazy and everybody's like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, so they get to Jerusalem. Look at all the thoughts that are emerging just as we read these stories about 
how they're encountering, what's what they're experiencing. Uh, I wrote down how Luke is really lifting up their hopes, uh, as it says in verse 19. Uh, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. And 21, we had hoped he was the one going to redeem Israel. Uh, you could ask questions. What, what did they mean by redeeming Israel? Uh, there has been years of debate. Do they mean he was going to free Israel from Roman rule and they were going to go back to the great kingdom of David and Solomon? Or did they mean a spiritual redemption? I guess over the course of history, we've come to think, oh yeah, they meant he was going to free us from sin, forgive our sin, and we each could be born again that way. Back in the day, I think they were expecting a new ruler, a, a new king to come along and uh, drive these pagans out. Anything else you see lifted up here or we can tease out of the reading? Is it because, it, because of the name Putin? Or is it because <laughs> it's created, it's almost the same story? Sure. It's a little bit different perspective, but it's the same concept, the same. Yeah. Same uh, despotic rule. Hello, there's a seat right here. Amy, we were going to ask. Were there any of the disciples, prophets, anybody that just felt comfortable and knew that this was happening and didn't like have as many questions and all that because this is what Jesus was teaching during the time when he was here? No. Okay. <laughs> so nobody had that enough belief. In no, them. apparently that you read the stories, they were all frightened, they were confused, they uh, were uncertain about what happened. So we he, talked about when he was here though, during uh -huh. the Last Supper and everything. So As we just heard, they huh? Yeah. What? It was the first time this ever happened, right? So yeah. it was like it was like unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I mean, what what Marie read in in uh, in Luke nine twenty one was the the header to it is Jesus foretells his death and mm -hmm. resurrection. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, again, what Amy said, he he's told them this many right. times. Now, kind of that's right. The backstory yeah. might be that in the course of history, a lot of men had come along saying, I'm the Messiah. And of course they were. They faded away, they died, they were killed. So it might have been like, oh yeah, another mm -hmm. one of these. But what about the Old Testament talking about the prophets? Exactly. Uh -huh. He told them that. He said, remember in the Old Testament right. with yeah. Moses, he reminded them himself. But I think as people, how much do we listen to what we don't want to hear? <laughs> you know, how much do we remember the, the I mm -hmm. told you so? And you're like, you never said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even, even <laughs> so, wasn't there, weren't there other times when, um, I don't know, maybe different religions or, you know, pagans talk about rebirth, that they, it may not have been it may have been something that they heard about and has never come true before. Mm. So why should they believe it now? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so, uh, I guess if we were to continue this study, we would go back to the Apostle Paul in later verses mm -hmm. of chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, where he has to argue and explain the resurrection. If the resurrection didn't happen, your faith is in vain and all this is for nothing. It's got to be true. So you're right. This was a, a contemporary or current debate they were having. Can the dead really raise? Can this really happen? And we could go into another five weeks of study just what people believe and thought about the resurrection. That's right. Uh, let me throw this out. <laughs> I believe in the resurrection. 
I believe that there is life after death. We will exist in heaven. Does the resurrection or the how to free? When does that happen? When does the resurrection take place? Three days after. Three days, at least for Jesus. Does it happen if you die in three days? No. No, we don't know. I think we like to believe that as we die, yeah. then our soul rises up and goes yes. to heaven. Uh huh. That's right. But isn't there that, like, especially the Catholics do the forty days or something? Of, is it like the process of ascension? Uh, like no, I, really, I can't really. I don't think so, but I'm not sure. I know they they have kind of. <laughs> You know, wait, you might get on the waiting list in purgatory. Before. I think they did away with oh, yeah. purgatory. <laughs> well, in some of the chapters, they talk about. <laughs> yeah, it's just my brother. Well, let me give you this. You can read the scriptures, the New Testament, and it will talk about the dead being raised on the last day. Right. And uh, that it's interpreted that once you die, you go into the grave and you remain there until the second coming of Christ, when the dead are raised and the trumpet sounds. Um, so it's not when we die, our souls go to heaven, but it is. I understand it this way, that... God's time is not our time. Right. God does not go by minutes, seconds, hours, days, years. A thousand mm -hmm. years in God's sight are as a moment past. Mm -hmm. So our souls enter into God's care immediately. There's no waiting in the grave. Your body goes in there. Maybe the Apostles' Creed says, I believe in the resurrection of the dead. Maybe sometime our body will be reconstituted and reunited, but otherwise our, our being, our soul is in the care of God for all eternity. And we just kind of leave it at that. What I had heard was that around the time, time of Jesus or soon after he died in that generation, they truly thought he was coming then. They truly yes. thought their body would be raised like his would be, was raised. Yeah. Mm. You can. You can read part of Paul's letters, and he says, uh, well, some have died, but others that are here will be around when Jesus returns, and could be any day now. So there was a strong belief that Jesus would return in Paul's lifetime. And that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, since we're at noon, I will push you on to Paul to uh, Acts. Okay, to finish up. Um, so, but they do we need to do when we understand this, uh, as an appearance that he appeared to us in the breaking of bread, and that's often thought of as the Eucharist or communion. So finally, we'll pick up on. Luke's version in Acts. And Judy Ann, do you want to start Is reading? This Acts 10, 38, 34, 38? Yeah. Okay. You read half and then someone else okay. can read that. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all those who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses 
whom God had already chosen by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to, to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Someone else want to finish it, 44 to 48? I'll finish it. Yes, thank you. While Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come to hear were astonished at the gift of the Holy Spirit that they poured out through an object. And he was saying, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we do. For he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they left Peter and stayed with them. Great. Well, because we're running late, we'll just say quickly to see how. Uh, in this part, boom, 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 he gives all three testimonies in like two verses, three verses, 39, 40, 41. We were witnesses. They killed them by hanging them on the cross. There's number one. Uh, God raised them on, from the dead. Number two, on the third day, and caused him to be seen. A little bit of a change here. He was seen not by all people, by witnesses whom God had already chosen by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. So that part is new. And now a fourth theme has been added, an important fourth theme. And I'm just going to write it over this, the Holy Spirit. Somehow, this Holy Spirit has touched all of them in some way that they recognize the risen Lord in whatever way as being among them. And it has created a new community. And uh, it's a community of Jews and Gentiles, of all different people. And it sounds like the church now. So uh, this gift of the Holy Spirit uh, hasn't been mentioned that much before. You might see the work of it in the previous Gospels that we talked about. But Luke really raises it up here in the book of Acts in kind of a direct way. Number 45, we're astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured out even on people like us, the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. I don't really want to hear you speaking in tongues, but you can praise God quite well, I believe. So anything else that this passage pulls out that you see? I think I think in this I think this, it might be other places too, but this is where kind of uh, I think the apostles are go from fear to forging that they're going to go forward, mm -hmm. and you know I think they all I, I I have to think they all know their fate yeah. at this point, but I think the fear goes from them and and their you know their 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 fate is no. they know what their fate is and what they have to do. I like that. Process is going the process of God laid out for all of them. Uh -huh. They got the Holy Spirit and they found acceptance. Yeah, this is a really good place to transition and to end today. That it's kind of a you're writing an Easter sermon for me <laughs> from fear to faith, <laughs> that transition that they're experiencing from a frightened, limited band of women and men, disciples hiding away in Jerusalem or 
frightened about what's happening around them to a transformed community that's going to start spreading out across the globe with the new message of hope, inclusion, forgiveness, uh, all these great things that we talked about today. Anyone got another little summary, Amy? Well, I like a little summary. I'm not there yet. Um, but, you know, Lazarus rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. So I'm just a little shocked that everybody else, well, these prophets or the disciples were like a little bit shocked. Uh -huh. But if I'm correct, the ones that, when Lazarus rose from the dead, it was the women that were there anyway, like Mary or... Sorry. Say that again. Who was there when Lazarus rose from the dead? The sisters, right? Mary and Martha. Jesus. Was one of those Marys the one that was there with the stone? I don't know. Don't never really said, but <clears throat> could be. But it was a, this was a different raising. He was yeah. raised back Jesus to life. Raised him from the dead. Right, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. So how can the the disciples that are you know that's John a, Mark Luke everybody going like oh I can't believe someone got raised from came point. back it's a magic trick uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean like Lazarus already had that happen that was a big story that, that was. was like the previous that's what I'm saying, of, right, so listen homework right <laughs> yeah, that is, or resuscitation <laughs> no, the human is, the human thought <laughs> over the spiritual thought no, uh, Amy, I think he healed the question I could have asked before what other people rose from the dead in the New Testament. There's at least, I think, at least three. Oh, I only really know one. Peter's mother. <laughs> Peter's mother. Who else? There's a, yeah. The young a young girl. girl was raised from the dead. A legionnaire's son. A legionnaire's son. Really? Lazarus. Lazarus. Um, even we get a story, I think Peter or Paul maybe uh, brought someone back from death to life. So, hmm. but that was after Jesus died. That was after the, all the other yeah. ones, right? Oh, well, there there are a few stories in the Gospels before. Yes, in the Old Testament too. Yeah, remember when? Um, I didn't remember. The, no, apparently not. not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, associate pastor. Remember. <laughs> So we are, what, is, what are we called? What kind of theologians? Oh, you're a resident theologian. <laughs> well, I, I have a couple of things, as Christian Ed Committee person. Um, we had talked about possibly dining together next week, but I had given it no further thought. Does anybody else have any thoughts about yeah. that? Well, we were thinking of bringing some Nosh foods in, but I'm fine with dining out if people want to or just not I, foods. I have so much on my plate right now that I, I can't even think about it. So uh -huh. I was bringing in some nosh foods because I'm actually doing um, the coffee, hour. coffee hour. So I'll bring in some nosh foods. Should we too. take a vote of what we like eat or just have the <laughs> nosh food? Okay. Nosh I'll try to snack. Snacks. Snacks. Yeah. Oh. Right. Really? That's a nice coffee. If you, if you are like so moved thing. by the Holy oh, Spirit to uh, bring in uh, some treat you're welcome to, okay? I'll reach out to a few people. All right. All right, and okay. organize Didn't it. Didn't we say somebody's Amy. coming into this room at a certain time and we have to get out? We were going to go to a different room. We were going to we go were to thinking room about three. Oh, that's room right. Two or oh, three. Two. Chat two. We, we could not and study at the same time. We can do that, that too. Oh, oh, no, we can. No, we can do that. Oh, we're not talking about coffee hour now. No, no. Class. we're talking during class. We're talking uh, class. Yeah, after we finish here. After you know, see, coffee hours more simple now, so, so it's not I'm what it used to be. So check. I did ask Marianne about room three. So anybody who wants to stay after and and nosh and continue conversations, okay. we'll, I mean, we'll does everybody? We can keep it simple. I can get a couple of subs yeah, and get them chopped up, you know, and, and yeah. everybody can have a little something, yeah. and then we can just have some some. You know, chips or something. Well, don't make it too elaborate. Just there's a box. There's a box. I mean, elaborate for me would be I'm bringing in hot food instead of putting up sternos. Okay, make it really about what's simple. Exactly. I buy the food and I cut it and I put it on a platter. That's my type of cooking. Okay. I was thinking about my type of cooking is bringing a bag of chips. Well, let's finish up here. Yeah, a whole different one more thing. Um, <laughs> preview of coming attractions. 
uh, Laura and Gwen will be doing a Bible study around Pentecost about what's the name of the book again? The Stranger in the Boat. So Where's the book? book? It's a the very book. good book. Yeah. It's Strangers, Mitch album. Strangers in writer. a Lifeboat that call on God to help them be saved. And their answer is very interesting. They get an interesting answer. And everyone I told to read the book, you know, as a good read, yeah. they read it in three days and things. Yeah, it's, 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 it's so book. good. <laughs> What's the name of Stranger in the Boat? Stranger in the Boat. Here's a picture of it. Can you see By it? By Mitch Album. Stranger in the Boat. A L B O M. Album. But you do it so well. Dear Lord, thank you again for gathering. Us, giving our giving us a chance to gather together and the freedom to do so and um, we are thankful for Pastor Donald we're thankful for the Christian committee that organized this and uh, we continue to learn and grow in our faith um, thank you Jesus for all you do for us and we enjoy the rest of our weekend Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.